Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have Mage Wars, the customizable strategy game of dueling mages created by Brian Pope and brought to you by Arcane Wonders. Now this is a pretty massive unboxing. I gotta be honest with you. There's a lot of cards, a lot of different tokens and stuff like that. So sit back, relax. This video may take a while. I purchased this game at a flea market and was 100% complete, so I was very happy. So this is not a brand new box of it, but all the components are in it. Also included when I purchased this uh, were two expansions as well, which were um, for the Conquest of uh, Kumanjara and Force Master versus Warlord. Uh, Warlord, sorry. And the boxes were obviously missing and all the cards were put into the one box. So I separated them all out and these will be separate uh, videos that I'll put out. They won't have a box to them, but you'll get the core contents that are included in these two expansions. But today we're going to focus on primarily just the core box, which is Maids Wars again, the customizable strategy game of dueling mages. Uh, it's a massive box and has a lot, a lot of stuff in it. So sit back, get your drinks, get your snacks, and let's get cracking and un let's unbox this bad boy and see what we got goodness we have inside of it. So again, we, oh, before I do that, let me flip it over this way so we can take a look at the back. So the back says right off the bat, Tom Vassell of Dice Tower ranks Mage Wars as the fourth best game of all time. My favorite game of 2012. It says, enter the arena. This is the fantasy game you have always wanted to play. You are a powerful mage stepping into the arena to battle to the death. Dripping with rich fantasy flavor, Mage Wars combines the best elements of customizable card games and miniature games. Fast-paced, exciting, and loaded with tough tactical decisions every, every round. Build your custom spellbook, then choose the, and cast just the spells you want at the right time. Enter the arena as a Beastmaster, Warlock, Wizard, or Priestess, each with their own unique strategies. Again, it's a massive box, and it has a tremendous amount of materials inside of it. Father Geek, it lives up to the hype and surpasses all my expectations. Drive-through review, this game is frigging amazing. Again, this game was brought to you by Arcane Wonders. It was released in 2012. Uh, for more information, go to MageWars.com. And of course, over here, we can find out that this game is for two players, ages 14 plus and lasts 45 to 90 minutes. And I'm going to put this box down because it's giving me a hernia keeping it up in the air like that. So again, let us crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. Again, this is the core box set. Okay, it's got to make a lot of room on the, the board is pretty gigantic. So I got to make room on the table here. So again, we have the core rulebook, Mage Wars, rulebook and codex. So let's flick through this. It says the arena calls. Uh, Mage Wars is a card driven board game of dueling mages. Two rival trained in different schools and philosophies of magic have come to the arena to determine whose magic will reign supreme. And the winner will be the last mage standing. Armed only with your spellbook, you must outwit and outmaneuver your foe while protecting your own mage from destruction. Prepare to enter the arena. Again, uh, for more information, go to magewars.com, and this was released in 2012. The artwork is spectacular, not only in the rulebook, but on the cards themselves, which is definitely a selling, part, uh, a selling point for a card game. Uh, apprentice mode stop before you open the packs of spell cards you need to know that they have been pre-organized for your convenience the pact with the beastmaster mage card on the top contains your apprentice spell cards and order see page three the pack with the essence drain on top contains the rest of the apprentice spell cards after that the remaining cards are ordered by spell type and then alphabetically the third pack with the thunderlift falcon on top continues in this order and i'll tell you something going through the cards and making sure they're all here it did take quite a bit so um, well, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, they're not exactly in the order that they're here, but you'll see uh, that I do that all the cards are present, and of course, that uh, they all have all been uh, linked together as it says in the top here. So, learning mage wars, the apprentice mode, the arena, the mages, uh, down here, the chan uh, channeling life armor, melee attack dice, spell books, 
the rules, magic rule, sidebars. Now, in this game, you have four choices for your, your mage that you're going to be using. Either be the Beastmaster, the Priestess, the Warlock, and the Wizard. And it gives you a list of the basic spells that they all know. So you got attacks, incant incantations, enchantments, creatures, and equipment that you start off with. That's your starting spell books. Then we have the setup of the game board and all of its components. Beautifully illustrated, as you can see here. Then you have the Mage Wars Arena setting up the game. Got this down here, Apprentice Mage status board setup. Then the game round, so there it has the ready stage, initiative, reset, channel, upkeep, planning, and deployment, the action stage first, quick cast phase, creature action phases, and final quick cast phase. With the ready stage and the action stage. So we got the ready stage. Phase one is initiative. Phase two is reset. Then you get to phase three, which is a channeling. Again, this is all explained. This is not a how to play through at all. This is just showing you what's in the box. What is mana upkeep? What is a trait? Phase five planning. We've got phase six deployment, the action stage, the quickest phase, quick cast action, got the action phase, acting action, gives you examples of it, active and inactive creatures, creature actions, final quick cast phase, more actions, you got movement, you got hindering movement, walls, traps, Counting distances, teleporting. What can a creature do during its action phase, you might want to know? Here we go. Quick actions. Make a quick attack, quick spell, guard. Take another move action, special quick action, do nothing. Full actions. Make a full attack, cast a full spell, take a special full action. Special actions. Spells. Let's look at the spell card. It breaks the card down. Tells you everything you need to know about how to use that card. Over here, it tells you spell name, type. Subtypes, casting line, casting cost, action icons, range, target, and the effects that they have, and the school and level that you need to be to cast it. Spell levels, casting spells, discarding spells, step one, your spell range, your counter spell, resolving spells, spell types, attacks, creatures, incantations, fast creatures, living and non living, corporal and incorporal, flying. We got familiars, we got spawn points, we got conjurations, we have zone exclusive, walls, line of sight, if a passage is blocked, a passage attacks, blocks line of sight, enchantments, attacking walls, enchantment mana costs, revealing enchantments, when can you reveal the matrix, uh, the enchantment matrix, who controls the enchantment, single-use enchantments, mandatory enchantments. So there's, there's a lot of detail in this game, as you can tell by going through this rule book. Traps, equipment, single traps, uh, what's required to use them, what's, what's not required, friendly enemy location, spell binding, equipment locations. Then we get into combat. You got attacks, making attack. You declare an attack, avoid attack, roll dice, damage and effects, additional strikes, damage barrier, counter strike, and the attack ends. You have your attack bar. Attack name, action required, attack type, damage type, attack dice, additional effects box, and attack traits. You declare an attack, paying the required costs. Step two, avoid the attack. Zone attacks, attack spells, defenses, Step three, roll the dice. Ranged attack, damage type, attack dice, and attack bar, attack modifiers. No matter how many traits or effects apply, the attacker always gets to roll at least one die, unless the target is immune to the damage type of the attack. Reading the attack dice. Step four, damage and effects. Step five, additional strikes, effects, and conditions. Removing damage, healing, regeneration, direct damage, damage modifiers, damage immunity, damage types, 
flame, hydro, light, lightning, poison, psychic, and wind. Removal costs, damage barriers. The counter strike. So he hits you, there you got the shot to hit back. Step eight, attack and zone attack, sweeping attacks, counter strikes. Again, you gotta love that artwork. Guarding, counter strike, protect the zone. Using guards, removing guards, ignoring guards. And more examples of how to do all this stuff. Then you got Brogan versus the Hydra. Giving an example of an actual battle sequence, which is very, very cool that they put that in there. Then you got the different mages. You have the Beastmaster. You have the Priestess, and gives a little background information about that and what their specialties are. You got the Warlock. You got the Wizard. Then, of course, you've got your spell books and how to put your spell books together. You got your training, your maximum spell points. Uh, first, building your first spell book, your equipment, incantations, conjurations, creatures, attacks, and enchantments. How many copies of a spell book can I have in my spell? Or how many copies of a spell can I have in my spell book? Spell traits, mage class, school of magic, mage only, epic spells, novice spells. Different schools of magic, the primary schools, dark school, mind school, arcane school, holy school, nature school, war school, elemental schools, earth school, water school, air school, fire school. Then starting spell books, who gets what. Boom. And multiplayer, if you want to have a free-for-all, passing initiative, turn order, team games, free-for-all gamers. Codex, helping you understand all of the different language in the game. Again, more language in the game. More language in the game. And the credits of the good people who brought you this game. For, again, this is a quick overview of the rulebook, which is 44 pages in length. Go to MageWars.com if you really want to learn how to play the game, obviously. They'll give you lots of hints, tricks, and probably have some run game through uh, run through videos that you can watch to get the general gist of how to play this game. Uh, game rounds again on the back it gives you a handy dandy uh, quick quick start guide of how to actually play uh, the game. You have the ready stage or the action stage, and you have the actions. When you look at it this way, it looks like there's not much to do, but this game uh, from one of, from the videos that I've watched about it. Uh, it can be quite complex, depending on how many spells you have, but at the same time, once you get and understand the core rules, the game will start moving a lot faster than the first time you play it. And that's pretty much what everybody said. But everybody has said to me also, this is a phenomenal game. So I'm looking forward definitely to uh, playing this game here too. So that's your rule book, which is a mighty tome, shall we say. All right, the next thing we're going to show you here is the massive, and I do mean massive, and it's only one-sided, the massive game board. Again, so you have a fallen mage here. It is a very, very, very big board. So I'm going to try to show it to you all in one shot here. And then we'll put it down. Again, we'll look at it by section by section. Again, it's just an arena with some cobblestones there. Some swords left behind from people who have fallen in battle. I'm going to flip it over. I don't want to crack it, so I'm going to be very careful when I'm flipping it. One way in, one way out, and through that door. So that's your game board. So it is pretty massive, as I said. So if you look at it lengthwise, that's how it would look. That's how big the game board is. So it's a pretty, pretty, pretty massive game board overall. So I, that's kind of giving you the feel of how it look if you're playing it straight on. 
be a bigger table, but I'm going to swing it this way so that we can fit actually do the unboxing because we're obviously not going to play a game. But here we go. We're going to put that Mage War logo right in the middle. And here we go. So there you go. That's the game board, which is pretty massive overall. Really awesome, though. I really am digging the, the game board itself. Uh, or the arena, I should say. So there we go. We have our rule book. We'll put that right up top there. One thing we have, uh, again, is a massive amount of cards that we will uh, go through last. Just kind of like an unboxing for a game of that has figures in it. Uh, we tend to do the figures last versus being them first because what can I say? There's a, there's a tremendous amount of cards in here. Tremendous amount of cards. Okay, so let's start off with the simple stuff. Let's start off with the, we'll start with this, go right through here. So we've got our, again, our keeping track of our rounds and spells that we're using. So here's your channeling, your mana supply, your life damage. So you can have up to 41 hit points here. Round summary, ready stage, initiative, reset, channel, upkeep, planning, and deployment. Action stage, first quick at space, creature actions move plus quick action or full action, final quick cast phase. And that's what that looks like. You get two of these in the box. And the back has another one. So front and backs are the same, but you get two of those. You get two spell books. These are actually really, really, really nice spell books. So you crack those open. And you've got your where you can the sheets where you can put your cards in there and create your own spell book, which is really really cool. Anyone who ever collected uh, baseball cards or football cards, hockey, you know, any type of sport cards or comic book cards, you know what these are used for. Uh, and this is really cool that this game comes with your own spell book. So that's really that's really going over the top for me. That's really really cool. Back design is really really cool. So really really happy to. Uh, make this per uh, purchase this game here so that's really cool that alone is worth the price of the investment here which again mage wars again another copy of that book yeah. for again it's a two-player game so you get your two spell books which is really really cool so put those up top there like that you get some dice and they are very game specific dice all the dice are the same so i won't show you all of them but here you go, you got a two there. You got a one blast marker, you got a two blast, you got a two, a one, and then blanks. So they are six-sided dice. And you get, let's see how many you got here. You get, you get nine of those. There they are. And come in a nifty little bag as well. You also get some markers and another, it's a 12-sided die. Not sure if that's made out of wood or plastic, but it's uh, it's definitely solid and looks good on the board. You get this, and you get that die there. You get some cubes. They're all identical, whether they are red or black. So I'll pull out one of each. Yeah, there would. There you go. Okay. So you get two red. And the rest are black. So it looks like you get two red and one, two, three, four, five, two red and six black. You get more action markers. One set, I'm assuming, for each player. They are red and blue. So I'll take out one of each. And 
they're identical again just except for the color which are cool so it's markers on the board like that i believe you get you get 20 of those so 10 of each and then you have a massive set of tokens i'll take these out and show you them And they're all different kinds of tokens. So you've got tokens that look like that are for days. They have different information on the back of them. So you have to look. So it says days, attack roll, seven plus or fail, negative two defenses remove after acting. In the back of that one, it says sleep, incapacitated, replaced with days when damaged. You flip those over. You got two sleep, three sleep, four sleep. So I got the sleep on the back. And we've got the days on the front. That's just some of those. Here's another days one. This one has rot on the back. Upkeep, take one damage. And all the icons on the bottom, that's explained to in the core rulebook. There's some days one. Here's another one that says, oh, these are different ones. These are burn ones. Okay, so different kinds of damage that you can get. Get a bunch of burn markers. Start with that, and when you flip them over, it says something different. So you got burn. All the burned ones, I believe, say the same thing. Yes, they do. So it says burn, upkeep, roll one die, zero equals remove burn, one to two, take damage. In the back, it says days on this one, which we read already. All right, so that's your burn marker. So these are, again, on the front, all say burn, which are the same, but you flip them over, it's a little bit different. Got one that says cripple, restrained after acting, roll seven plus to remove. Weak, non-spell, negative one, minus one to non-spell attacks. You got rot again, upkeep, take one damage. Again, rot is the same. Again, weak is the same as the weak over here. And then you have stun, which says incapacitated, remove after acting. So there you are, that's your burn markers. You have some ones that say weak on the front. Again, minus one, non-spell attacks. You flip them over, you got Rod again, Days again, and Stun again. Oh, we got another burn one here. I'm gonna flip that over, it says Stun on the back. Okay, we read that already. You've got your initiative token, so your first player. Whoever has initiative, that's for them. And then you got a couple more that say Stun, Incapacitated, Remove After Acting. And then back it says cripple and rot. Again, we read both those already. So those are some stun markers that are on the front. You got one rot by itself. And it says cripple on the back. So put that one down there as well. Vol Voltaric shield is on. Voltaric shield is off. We got that token as well. You got a pet. Front and back are the same. There you go, you got a pet token. Then you have a Blood Reaper. That's cool. Let's see what else we got here. We have a, another animal, it says Taunt. Front and back, it says Taunt. And then you have a bunch of blood markers which look like this. They have a splatter, blood splatter on them. Just gonna pull them all out here to show you. Appears to be ones and threes. You got a six here also, it looks like. Okay, so we got a lot of those. So it looks like six is the highest. I believe the numbers are, oops. The numbers are the same on front and back. I don't know if that's a six or a nine, not sure. Again, read the rule book, that'll tell you right in there. Could be a nine, not sure. But you've got a combination of threes, one, and that's the only six I see there. So there you go. Those are your blood tokens, or your wound markers, I'll say. Then I'm assuming these purple ones are for the mana. You got a bunch of those two of ones and threes. And 
and then you have ones that say guard on them. Up close. Guard. Flip that around. There you go. Get a bunch of those. You have ready on one side and used on the other. And you got a bunch of those tokens. There you go. I didn't show you one of these up close. So I'll just show you that real quick. These are number three. You got threes and ones. And again, look up uh, close at the blood token, blood spatter. So it's three. That's what it looks like. Okay. So that's all the tokens. And you get a nifty little bag that they came in. Now we get to the decks of cards. Each, again, you have your different mages that you're using. So let's take a look here. So we've got, start off here. There's your wizard, that's your card that tells you. Now, all the backs are the same, so keep that in mind. So here's your first character that you can be. You can be the wizard. And then you have a, a card that explains pretty much what his uh, special abilities are. Gives you all the skill stats at the bottom. Top, it tells you the character, tells you he has 32 wounds, and tells you all the information up here. Again, all these icons are explained to you in the core rulebook. The training that he had trained in the arcane school and an elemental school of his choice is fire, earth, air, or water. Volteric shield, which we saw the token for right there. So he's the one who uses that. In the back, it's nothing. So what I like about the cards right off the back is that it's not a two-sided card. It's a one-sided card. And that's for, just flip them over, that's for all the cards. And that's very helpful. So you're not constantly flipping cards. All right. Especially in a game like this where you're using so many cards okay then we have his spells and again these are all the spells that are from the starter deck that he gets uh dragon scale hubrick elemental wand leather boots staff of the arcanium suppression cloak blue gremlin blue gremlin see what it says bottom pest when this creature is activated you may pay one mana if you do gremlin gains the fast trait until the end of the round and each move action he takes this round is a teleport to the next zone, okay? Dark Fiend Hydra, Gorgon Archer, Mana Leech, Mana Leech, Stone Gaze Basilic, Lock, Essence Drain. Now, as you can tell, for the different types of spells, they'll all have, all the cards will be different colors. So as you see that right here, different colors. Okay. So we left off, we were here, Block, Essence Drain, Force Hold, Force, force Sword, Jinx. When this creature casts a quick spell, you must reveal Jinx during the counter spell step. That spell is canceled and is returned to its owner spell book. Any mana spent to cast that spell is refunded to the caster mana supply, then destroy Jinx. Okay, Nullify, Reverse Magic, Dispel, Dissolve, Minor Heal, Minor Heal, Sleep, Steal Enchantment, Teleport, Chain Lightning, Electrify, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. So that's your starter deck intro deck for your wizard and that is one of the choices that you have obviously one of the choices that you have for your main character so you got a choice of wizard next up we have the warlock again the artwork spectacular again the trait card here Again, trained in the dark and fire schools, holy spells cost triple during spell book creation. Tells you his stats lines up top here. He's a human. Uh, curse weaving, blood reaper, battle skull. Uh, battle skill, I should say. So there it is. And he's got demon hide armor. So let's see what that says. Dark mage only. Mage gains armor plus two and a damage barrier. Lash of health, fire, leather gloves, dark, uh, dark fiend bat. Dark Pack Slayer, Fire Baron Imp, Flaming Hellion, Goron, Will Werewolf Pet, Skeletal Sentry, Agony, Bear Strength, Death Link. Let's see what this says. Mage Cast Unique, Mage Dark Mage Only. Each upkeep phase, the controller of Death Link may heal up to two damage from his mage and place it on this creature as direct damage, regardless of distance or line of sight. Quote at the bottom, life to life, death to death, 
our essences entwined. Okay, Enfeeble, Ghoul Rot, Mage Bane, Mark for Death, Vampirism, Dispel, Drain Life, Explode, Forced Push, Vampiric Strike, Vampiric Strike, Fireball, Firestorm, Flame Blast, and Flame Blast. So there you got it right there. So that's two of your mages that you can be. You can be the Wizard and the Warlock again. Get you that artwork of that wizard right off the bat there again. Really cool. So those are two of choices that you have there. So if you wanted to just, again, it's a two-player game. So this in these spell books here, these cards would all go right in there. And that's your starting decks for those two. We also have a couple more characters that you can choose for, or mages that you can choose for in the first game. So we're going to move to the priestess. Again, there's the artwork for the priestess. Again, her, her card or her explanation. Again, her core stats are up top there. She's a high elf. Trained in holy school. Dark spells cost triple during spell by creation. Divine reward. Restore. And all the stuff down here as well. Again, it's only one-sided. So in her spell deck, you have deflection bracers. It says mage gains a defense of 7+. plus. Very cool. Stephra Syra. Wind Wyvern Hyde. Assyrian Cleric. Brogan Bloodstone, Grey Angel, Highland Unicorn, Knight of Westlock, Royal Archer, Block. Let's see what this thing says. When this creature is attacked, you must reveal Block during the avoid attack step. Block counts as a defense and the attack is unavoided. Or attack is avoided. Then destroy Block. If this attack is unavoidable, destroy Block without effect. The sword came down with thunderous force, but the wizard only smiled. A shimmering field absorbed the entire blow, then flickered away. Bull Endurance, Divine Protection, Nullify, Pacify. Rhino Hide, Sacred Ground, Dispel, Dissolve, Force Push, Group Heal, Heal, Minor Heal, Sleep, Blinding Flash, Pillar of Light, Pillar of Light. And then, so that's the starting deck for your Priestess. And last but not least, you can be the Beastmaster. And everybody remembers that movie from the 80s. All right, so moving on. Beastmaster, again, is a creature. He's a wood elf. Trained in the nature school. Fire spells cost triple during spellbook creation. Quick summoning. He's got a pet and battle skills. Again, down here, all the icons are explained and how to use them all in the core rulebook. So he's got bear skin, elemental cloak, staff of beast, bitterwood fox. Let's see what this thing is. It's fast. Their meat is gamey and their teeth are sharp. It's best just to avoid them. All right. Severe, the far shadow, emerald tegu, feral bobcat, steel claw, claw grizzly, thunderlift falcon, timber wolf, tangle vine, living, Flame plus two, Hydro Immunity. Target is restrained and gains the immovable trait. Tangle Vine cannot target creatures with the flying or uncontrollable traits. Range attacks cannot target Tangle Vine. We've got Tangle Vine, Bear Strength, Block, Cobra Reflexes, Regrowth, Retaliate, Rhino Hide, Call the Wild, Charge, Dispel, Dissolve, Group Heal, Minor Heal, Rouse the beats, uh, Beast, Geyser, Geyser, and Jetstream. And that is the starting deck for the Beastmaster. Now, so you start off with those, and obviously as the game progresses, you can gain um, abilities, you can learn new skills and new spells and all that kind of stuff. So, they also give you additional decks of cards that are color-coordinated to help you know what type of spells that they are. Again, the options that you have for different types of spells are, let's see if I got it here. Yes, I got it right here. So you have your equipment cards. Your, again, each color represents something different. So you have your equipment cards, your conjurations, your creatures, your enchantments, and your incantations. So example of an equipment would be bearskin, hunting bow, mage wand, regrowth belt, ring of beasts. Conjuration would be an animal kinship, a liar, uh, Ragin's Fury, Tangle Vine, Wall of Thorns. A creature would be something like a feral bobcat, a giant wolf spider. 
Enchantment would be Bear Strength, Bull Endurance, Cobra Reflexes, Eagle Wings. Incantation would be Battle Fury, Call of the Wild, Dispel, Dissolve, Force Push, Attacks would be based on your character itself. So the colors indicate what type of spell it is. So again, that's all goes over all that in the core rule book. So for your purple cards, we have all these different spells. So these are additional spells. These are the core. These are additional spells that you can learn, which is Banish, Battle Fury, Call of the Wild, Charge, Dispel, Dissolve, Drain Life, Drain Power, Evade, Explode, Force Push, Heal, Knock Down, Lay Hands. Let's see what that says. Epic, Holy Mage only. Heal target creature, the amount rolled on 12 attack dice. Remove as many condition markers as you wish from target creature by paying the removal cost. Perfect Strike, Piercing Strike, Pure Magic, Purify, Resurrection, Rouse the Beast, Seeking the Spell, Shift Enchantment, Steal Enchantment, Teleport, Teleport. Now again, we saw this in the rule book earlier where it said, now you see you have a couple of the different cards that are in here. Well, how do you know how many of these cards you can have in your hand? Well, right there that'll tell you. Or how many of these spells can you have in your spell book? Again, that'll be all explained to you in the rule book. It's probably going to be based on your level as well as how big your expertise becomes. So there's some extra cards here for you as well. I'm going to push this back just a little bit so we can get a little bit more room for you. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit more also so we can have um, some more cards here. I got plenty of cards, plenty, plenty of cards. We're making our way through it though. I thought this would take a little longer than it is, but it's not as long as I thought. So that's a good thing. So we've got Agony. Again, the different cards represent the different type of spell that you're casting. Okay. So again, I when I went through this uh, to make sure we had all the cards, the reality is, is that I put them in all the colors like this and pulled out those starter decks like they tell you to do in the, the core rule book. But again, it's better to keep all your cards together by color. This way, you know, when you're getting more, uh, you, you know, becoming a, a better mage, you've run the game a bunch of times, you're taking on additional spells. It's better to keep them here to know what your options are versus having to flip through all the different colors. All right, keep them in order this way. Um, agony, block, bull enhancement, chains of agony, cheetah speed. Let's see what that says. This creature gains the fast tree. All right, circle of lightning. Cobra Reflexes, Decoy, Divine Intervention, Divine Protection, Eagle Wings, and, uh, and Feeble Essence Drain. This creature gains the upkeep plus two trait. Force uh, Essence Drain, they got, got two of those. Force Orb, Force Hold, Ghoul Rot, Harmonize. So like I was saying, you got three of those cards. Can your character have all three of the spells at the same time? Not quite sure. You'll have to look at that. Uh, Hawkeye. Hellfire Trap. Jinx. Maim Wings. Mark for Death. Mongoose Ability. Nullify. Poison Blood. Regrowth. Retaliate. Reverse Attack. Reverse Attack. Reverse Magic. Sacred Ground. Teleport Trap. Turn to stone and vampirism. Let's take a look at that one. It says, this creature, this creature's melee attacks gain the vampiric trait. My master has given me power and my fang shall drink of your blood. It gives me life, an unnamed blood demon in the heat of battle. Okay. Again, if you look at these cards really quickly, you'll see that the artwork is spectacular on each and every card. They really are. They really are great looking cards. The artwork is fantastic in this game. Okay, so that's another part of your spell deck. So as you can see right here, you got the purple, you got the fire flame deck. So again, as we're going through this. Now we also have, we have this red set here. Again, all the backs are the same. So you're concentrating on the sides of the cards that tells you they're all the same type, okay? Again, Blinding Flash, it tells you up here the type of attack it is, how you use to defend it, what the mana cost is, all that stuff is up here, the, how long it lasts, how many zones it'll go, 
and all this down here, all these icons and stuff are explained in the rule book again. So let's read what this is. Blinding flash it attacks all objects in the zone except the caster. Asira, bathe me in your light and blind the heretics with your glory. All right. Chain lightning, electrify, fireball, firestorm, jet stream, lightning bolt, pillar of light, ring of fire, and thunderbolt. Let's see about those. And not so much more to go with the cards. Okay, and we have this type of card as well. Okay, here go. Adramalech, Lord of Fire. He's a creature, so these are your creature cards up here. Okay, so it's, he's a demon. You can tell that right there. And again, all the stat lines are around the card. Again, Rubel could give you more instructions. Flying, Flame Muni, Legendary. Assyrian Cleric. Bitterward Fox, Dark Fane Bat, Hydra, uh, I should say Dark Fane Hydra, Dark Pact Slayer, Emerald Tegu, Fiela, Fel Ella, Pixie Familiar, Firebrand Imp, Gray Angel, Highland Unicorn. So the unicorn says regenerate two, charge plus two. All friendly living creatures in the same zone as Highland Unicorn gain the regenerate one trait. Huggin, Raven Familiar, Malakota, Manalich, Moonglow Fairy, Mountain Gorilla, Necropian Vampiris, Red Claw Alpha Male, Royal Archer, uh, Samandriel, Angel of Light, Aegis One Flying, Light Immunity, Legendary. It says here, I lay near death, a prayer to Asira upon my lips when the blinding sun came forth to strike down my foes, a vision of beauty, power, and light. Sarusko, Ferret Companion, Tarek the Sky Hunter, Timberwolf, Thunderlift Falcon, Valshala, Lightning Angel, and Whirling Spirit. So these are the creature cards. Again, these are the attack cards. These are the enchantment cards. And these are your incantation cards. So the title's up top and the colors also indicate the type of cards. And we have two more sets of cards to go through and we're done. All right. Then we're gonna take a look at these cards, which are the green cards. And they are for Conjuration, Temple, Temple of the Dawnbreaker. Zone exclusive. Once per round, you may choose and do one of these. Reroll a defense or escape roll that you just rolled. Or if a friendly creature is in the, in the defender of an attack, you can reroll the effect. Roll or all the attack dice from that attack. Use a ready marker to keep track of this ability. And here's your ready markers right over there. Now those are your action markers. Ready is over here. So you plop that on there like that. Boop. Okay, so again, these are your conjurations. Temple of the Dawnbreaker, Temple of Light, Sacrificial Altar, Mana Crystal, Idol of Pestilence, Gate to Voltari, Gate to Hell. That one's pretty cool. It's a portal. Zone Exclusive, Flame Immunity, Hydro Plus 3, Epic Warlock can, is the only person who can use this. All Demon Creatures gain Melee Plus 1. Once per game, as a full action, you may pay 12 mana to open the gate and make the above attack against each non-flying creature up to two zones away from the gate. Once open, whenever you summon a demon creature, you may place it in the gate zone instead of your own zone. Deathlock, Battle Forge, Animal Kinship, Mordox of Oblisk, Suppression Orb, Mana Flower, Lair, Mana Flower, Tangle Vine, Rajan's Fury, Tooth and Nail, Mana Flower, Mo Katari, Great Tree of Life, Mana Flower, Temple of Assyria, again a flower, Hand of Bin Shala, Pentagram, Let's see what that one says, Spawn Point, Zone Exclusive, Incorporal, Epic, Warlock can only be the one who casts this spell. Each time a different enemy creature is attacked and damaged by a friendly creature, place one mana on Pentagram. Pentagram may gain a maximum of two mana per round this way. 
During the deployment phase, if there is two or more mana on Pentagram, it may summon one dark living creature. Battle Forge. Mana Crystal, Mana Crystal, Mana Crystal, Mana Crystal. Poison Gas Cloud. Mana Siphon, Poison Gas Cloud. Incorporal Wind plus two. Each upkeep phase, all living creatures in Poison Gas Cloud zone receive two points of direct poison damage. If a living creature enters this zone, or starts its action phase in the zone, it may not take more than one move action this round. So again, these are the conjurations. Those are your decks. And your last deck, we have one last deck right here for you. And that one is your equipment. You have an arcane ring, wizard only. Once per round, this mage may pay one less mana when he casts or reveals a meta magic or mana spell. Enchantments only receive this discount when they are revealed. So you get your ring, crown of protection, dawnbreaker ring, enchanter's ring, elemental cloak, elemental wand, fire shaper ring, gauntlets, gauntlets of strength, helm of fear, levarium longbow, lightning ring, magic staff, magic wand, moon glow amulet, Ring of Asira, Ring of Beasts, Ring of Curses, Regrowth Belt, and Moloch's Torment. Again, right there tells you the only character who can use it would be the Warlock. So Warlock only during the upkeep phase for each creature that has a, at least one curse you control attached to it. You may spend one mana to deal one direct damage to that creature. It says at the bottom here, like its master, this amulet curses all who behold it. Damning them with its blasphemous oaths. So there you have it. Again, this deck here was your equipment. So there you have it. This is everything that's included. And this concludes our unboxing of the card game. Mage Wars, the customizable strategy game of dueling mages. It was a big unboxing, and thank you for staying with me throughout. Again, this game was created by Brian Pope, Arcane Wonders. Uh, again, based on the videos that I've seen about this game, uh, your first game will take a while because there's a lot going on here. But as you become more comfortable with the game, uh, again, as you saw in the back of the box, it is rated very, very highly as one of the best games that was ever created uh, for playing cards. Uh, so... As always, thank you so much for joining me for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. As always, uh, if you enjoyed the video, you can give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment below. Also, you can always hit that subscribe button. This way you're kept up to date as to any time we release any new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.